Hi one and all and welcome to today's video on inverse functions. Yes, the excitement builds as we work our way further and further through this course. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then I'm actually recording videos that are dealing with methods three and four, but are equally useful for all sorts of things like A-level, Algebra one, and any topic you're dealing with that deals with graphs and inverses. So thank you very much for watching. If you already know what I'm about to say, then just skip the next 20 seconds. But otherwise, if you are new, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated if you could click the doohickey over there. Uh, just let me know that you're watching. I don't get any money from this. Um, I don't think I'll ever get money from this because who wants to watch math videos? But um, it's good to know that you're watching. So thank you very, very much. We are dealing today with inverse functions and the learning is shown above. What are we going to look at? Well, Basically, long story short, I'm going to shortcut this whole lesson and go, this is an inverse. I'm going to tell you right at the very, very beginning. I'm not going to wait it to the end. Uh, we're going to look at the difference between inverse functions and inverse relations, because that's actually crit uh, critically important. What an inverse function look like, uh, algebraic solution of inverses, and some tips and tricks that come up in exams all the time. They are definitely the end, the tips and tricks, to hopefully keep you watching. Now, as I say, this is a continuation of a course that I'm dealing with over here with my students and hopefully the learning that you have will be useful uh, in, in whatever you're doing. But we've looked at things like adding, subtracting and uh, multiplying functions, how to take composite functions and they come in a bit towards the end. And that's where you take a function and put it inside a function. And I had a, a very funky video uh, where I talked about cows and mints and, and party pies. A whole new discussion. But uh, yeah, I was rather proud of that one. If you haven't watched it, oh, please do. Um, but, you know, inverses are something that, that tricks absolutely everybody. And, and I hopefully won't be in a situation where you guys are tricked if you watch this video. Okay, so what is an inverse? Well, effectively, it's when you take one relation, and I'll come back to the idea about functions and relations, it's where you take one relation and you reflect it in the line y equals x to get to a different relation. That's an inverse. It's literally all it is. It's taking one graph and reflecting it and turning it into another graph. And the line y equals x is freaking awesome, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, as you can see behind me, as I've zoomed in, uh, there is a perfect example of what an inverse is. My red line here is the line what or the graph y equals the square root of x. I know we haven't got to that quite yet in this course, and there's a lot coming on graphs and transformations, all that type of stuff. But let me promise you this, it's used ever such a lot. So my advice is learn the shape, learn the domains, learn the ranges, and, and realistically speaking, you should be in a better position than probably lots and lots of people. This blue line here is part of the graph y equals x squared. Now I'll come back again as to why it's just part of, because actually that's the trick here between whether it's an inverse relationship or an inverse function. And as I say, this line here is the line y equals x. It is critically, critically important. What it means is every point along there has the same x and y coordinate. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. It is a diagonal line. So in any exam now, believe it or not, if I said to you, draw an inverse of a particular graph, you should be able to do it. You just draw a dotted line diagonally through the graph, the line y equals x, and you, no word of a lie, just reflect it. Just flip it over so that it just goes a different way. And you've done it. That's probably two or three marks before you even start. But there's a point to all of this, and it's like the reason people get confused is that there is a huge difference between an inverse relation and an inverse function. And in an exam, you have to be really, really careful to know the difference between the two. So what is a relation? Well, a relation is effectively any equation whatsoever, any equation. So if I had x squared plus y squared equals 4, again, this is another standard equation out there that we use. That's the equation of a circle that has a radius of 2. That's an example of relation. It's got x's, it's got y's, it's got a number. I can graph it. It's not a problem but it is not a function. Because if you remember, what's the difference between a function and a relation? Well, a function is where I draw a vertical line and it crosses through my equation or it crosses through my graph at only one point for the duration of that function. Okay, so when you draw a vertical line, it can only cross through once. So what would be an example of a function? Well, one of the ones we use ever such a lot is the graph y equals x squared. Why is that one we use a lot? Well, it's really the basis for lots of different things. Now, that's a, not the best star, uh, drawing of a y equals x squared. But again, if I draw vertical lines anywhere through this function, it will only cross one. So I now know this is a function. 
The problem with inverses, ladies and gentlemen, this is the big learning as well, is that you can only take inverse or a function can only have an inverse if the function is one to one. Now don't press stop, not just yet guys, this is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mathsguru.com, yep, that's my custom website, bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.